Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and I am excited to be joining you again today to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is, of course, books. And this week, I'll be talking about another one of my favorite authors from childhood, and that is the author E.L. Konigsberg. And I started reading E.L. Konigsberg when I'm not sure how old I was. As I've mentioned before, you know, I come from a family of avid readers, and my dad's a librarian, and my mom loves to read. And so they were always finding books, coming across books, researching books, you know, just finding books that they thought would be interesting for us, uh, for my siblings and I to read. And E.L. Konigsberg was one of those authors. And the first book that I read by her is a book called From the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. And we're going to be talking about that book first. But it actually came up recently because someone uh, posted on Facebook a link to an article with the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And if you've read this particular book, you know that that is where it takes place. And so I was looking at this article and I'm going to talk more about that a little bit later. And it reminded me just of just how much I loved this book and how much I loved other books by this same author. And so I thought, This is an author that I want to talk about on the podcast, and I, you know, want to share my love for this author and for these books. She has a quirky sense of humor. She's got interesting storylines that aren't necessarily like other storylines that you might find in books. So that's always fun. I always appreciate when you get a story that really sticks with you. You remember parts because, you know, they are unusual or they really spoke to you in some way. And her books were that way for me. So As I said, the first book that I want to talk about is from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweller. And actually, this is the 50th anniversary of this book. And that is one of the reasons that this video was posted is because they are having in July, I believe, um, events at the Met involving tours about you know travel there are places in the met that are that are mentioned in this book and you can take these tours family tours through the met to visit the places that the children explore in this book so there is this article and there's this video of a 10 year old abby and one of the museum workers who has worked there for 31 years and they're both talking about their love of the book and the events that take place in the book and the things that they love about the met And so here is the description from Amazon of this book. It says, when suburban Claudia Kincaid decides to run away, she knows she doesn't just want to run from somewhere, she wants to run to somewhere, to a place that is comfortable, beautiful, and preferably elegant. She chooses the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Knowing that her younger brother, Jamie, has money and thus can help with her a serious cash flow problem, she invites him along. Once settled into the museum, Claudia and Jamie find themselves caught up in the mystery of an angel statue that the museum purchased at auction for a bargain price of $225. The statue is possibly an early work of the Renaissance master Michelangelo, and therefore therefore worth millions. Is it or isn't it? Claudia is determined to find out. Her quest leads her to Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, the remarkable old woman who sold the statue, and to some equally remarkable discoveries about herself. 
So here you have it. It's a, it's a mystery. It starts out as two children who are running away. And, you know, as a kid, that seemed really exciting to me. And they run away and they go and they live in this museum. You know, they, they hide out in the bathrooms and they figure out all the ways to get around security, which is probably a little bit easier in 1967 without all the digital security we have now. But they figure out this whole routine for how they're going to live in the museum and where they're going to find food and how they're going to use their money and they sleep in this you know amazing antique old bed and they they hide their their stuff in certain parts of the museum and it just seemed like this really exciting adventure although I was um, really scared of the dark as a kid so I can't imagine being alone in a giant museum I think that would have scared me a lot but that's what I loved about this story was this adventure right kids who are kind of my age who are in New York, they've run away to this amazing museum and they're having this amazing adventure, which leads to them trying to solve a mystery. And this book is, it's, it's listed as for age level eight to 12 for grade level three through seven. So kind of a, a good variety of ages there for your kids. Uh, and you've co you of course know your kids best and know what reading level they're at. Or if you read as a family, you'll know what level of comprehension and level of uh, story that they enjoy hearing or reading on their own. And as I said, this starts out as kind of an adventure and then moves into a mystery. Now that I am old, Older and I think about my nieces and other important children in my life and I think I think of it from the parental standpoint and I think oh my gosh these two children just ran away to New York City their parents must be flipping out so it's, I, I read it uh, recently again as an adult and I, I read it from a slightly different perspective as I was thinking about their parents and oh my goodness that's just horrible right I read somewhere that E.L. Konigsberg wrote, well, she wrote this story thinking about her own children and that if they were to ever run away, they would have to run away to someplace, that they wouldn't want to run away and, you know, rough it. They wouldn't want to be those kids who took their backpack and went out into the woods. No, they would need to run away somewhere where they could live in the uh, style that they were accustomed to. And so that's how this book started, that she doesn't, that Claudia doesn't want to run away from somewhere she wants to run to somewhere and she decides that this elegant beautiful place that she's visited is the perfect place for her to run away to and i actually went to the met a few years ago oh more than a few years ago now it's been about 10 years ago now and it was amazing but it was also Thanksgiving weekend and I am not a big fan of crowds and there were so many people in there. So I didn't spend much time in the Met. I was very disappointed in that. I just couldn't quite deal with all of the people that were in there on the day that we went. And it was just a timing issue. I would love to go back. I would really love to go back. And if I were able to go in July, I think it would be a lot of fun to go and do some of those tours that they're having. At any rate, I also read that uh, Yale Konigsberg wrote often when her children were in school, she started writing after her children uh, started school and she would write and then the, when they would come home, she would read what they wrote to, she would read to them what she had written that day. And if they laughed or they enjoyed it, she would keep it. If not, she would try again. So I love that this, you know, that this is really personal, that she was writing for her children and she in this case was kind of writing about her children a little bit in in terms of her inspiration for this story and as I said I love the adventure of this story I love the mystery of this story it's fun to watch the children as they move through this adventure into more of a journey of self-discovery as they try to solve the mystery they start learning more about themselves especially Claudia of course because she is the main character uh, her her younger brother Jamie provides some. Well, he provides the cash, of course, for the, this, for their adventure, and he um, they also get cash. Uh, they they take change out of the fountain where people throw their change. They also bathe in the fountain, which is hilarious. That they are in the in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, this place of just amazing works of art. And there are these two children who are bathing in the fountain at night when nobody else is around and they're sleeping in this amazing antique bed, four poster bed and all of these things. And one of the fun parts about that video was that 10 year old Abby, who's in the video, 
goes around with the woman who works in the museum and they find places that are mentioned in the books, uh, whether it's an actual specific place or if it's something very similar to what's mentioned in the book. And another cool thing about the book is that E.L. Konigsberg does all the drawings. There's these wonderful pen and ink black and white drawings in the book that she drew from visiting the Met herself. So there's really incredible detail in these drawings. And this is just such a fun book. I can't speak highly enough of it. I do have to take our first break, but when we come back, I'll be talking more about E.L. Konigsberg. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. This week I am talking about author E.L. Konigsberg. Specifically, uh, before the break, I was talking about her book from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. It is the 50th anniversary of this classic. And as such, you know, it was written in 1967. So there are definitely some different things about this book. Even when I read it as a child, and, you know, it was not 50 years old then, but even as a child, First of all, I grew up in rural Montana, so New York seemed about the most exotic place that I could think of as a child. I didn't know, you know, a lot of, you know, this huge city. I didn't, I couldn't quite even fathom it, even though I'd seen it in, in movies and on TV, but imagining being a kid and, and, and running away in this giant city. But so even during my childhood, I read it in, in the eighties sometime, I'm not sure exactly when. So it was about 20 years old at the time. Wow, that makes me feel old. <laughs> but um, it, even then, you know, there are things they get their food out of um, vending machines, but I think they're called automats. Is that sound right? But it was, there were a few things that I didn't fully understand, even, even though, you know, it was um, much closer to when this book had been written, but still times had changed enough. And so, of course, there are, like I said, the, the security would be different now if they were to run away, if they, if there was an updated version of it, you know, they run away, they, uh, there's no cell phones, there's, um, when they are doing research, they're doing research, they're reading newspapers, they're doing those sorts of things when they go to visit Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler and her mixed up files, you know, she actually has files in, a, in file cabinets and those sorts of things. So it is fun to read it from that perspective to see, you know, these children who uh, of course are going on this wonderful adventure, but going on this wonderful adventure in 1967 too. So to compare how that would be, um, that's always something when I read with my own family, how I like to say, you know, how is this similar to what we are, do you know, how is this similar to our own lives or how is this very different or what part doesn't make sense to you? Those sorts of things even especially money. So in the book description, it says that the museum purchased this um, piece of art that could be a Michelangelo for the bargain price of $225, which of course is a bargain price, but $225 in 1967 would have been uh, still a bargain, but $225 would have been a lot more money, you know, than it is now. So there's those sorts of things that, they get their money again late, as I said, that they, they get the coins out of the fountain. So seeing what they can buy with the coins that they get out of the fountain, out of the vending machines, um, is, is fun. And it's fun to imagine or to, you know, just compare them, compare those things to the way our lives are now. So I cannot recommend this book enough. I loved this book. I recommend it to you. I recommend it to you to read it as an adult, frankly, if you like to, if you read it as a child, go back and revisit it. If you didn't read it as a child, 
well, what the heck? Go and read it and just have a, you know, a, a short book, an easy read that's a fun adventure. But if you have children, I definitely recommend it for them. Children who are creative, children who are interested in art, children who are, you know, adventurous in any way. I think they will really love this book, whether they read it on their own or whether you read it as a family. I highly recommend this book. So I do want to move on to another one of E.L. Konigsberg's books. And I'm not sure that this one is as well known. It is called Up from Jericho Tell. And a, a quick aside, a quick note, we have two chihuahuas in our family and they are three their brother and sister and they are uh, chalupa batman and tallulah cooper my husband named chalupa after a show called the league if you watch the show then i'm sure you know what i am talking about with the name chalupa batman and i named the girl dog tallulah cooper and partly because when we first got them and we hadn't named them yet, I was calling her my little trash compactor because in the first half an hour after we got these dogs, she ate a leaf or she tried to eat a leaf, a rock. You know, she was a puppy, so she was exploring the world with her mouth and she tried to eat so many different things in that first half an hour that we had them at home. So I was calling her my little trash compactor and I wanted her initials to be TC after her first her first name, her first nickname of trash compactor. I wouldn't ever call her trash compactor as her real name. And Cooper comes from my niece at the my she was three at the time and her best friend was Cooper. And so middle name came from Cooper, but Tallulah is uh, Tallulah Bankhead, not necessarily because of the actress, but because of this book, Up from Jericho Tell. And in this book, there are two, oh, so, so let me just, let me just read you the description. Jean Marie and Malcolm meet Tallulah the ghost of a once famous actress who sends them on a quest to find the Regina stone, the diamond she wore until it was stolen when she died, but they soon find more than they bargained for. So once again, you have two children, a boy and a girl, and they find themselves on this adventure. This one's a little different because there are elements of um, paranormal elements of fantasy. Anyway, they, so they meet the ghost of Tallulah Bankhead. And I didn't know who this was. If you don't know who Tallulah Bankhead is, she was an actress in the 20s. So probably not a lot of people know about her now. As a child, I didn't really know who she was. I loved the illustrations. Again, Eel Konigsberg does the illustrations in this book. I loved the drawings of Tallulah Bankhead because, you know, she's wearing fabulous flapper gear when they meet her. And so this book is a little bit weird because they do meet a ghost and they, she does send them on this quest instead of a mystery about a uh, statue at a museum. They are now trying to find this necklace that was stolen from her in life. And I, I read this book. I loved this book as a kid, but I didn't remember a lot about it except for the Tallulah bankhead part, which I think is really interesting. So back to my puppy story, when we got our dogs, I named my dog Tallulah because of this book. And so after that, I really wanted to go back and find it and see really what it was about, because all I could remember was that these two children somehow end up meeting Tallulah bankhead which is very, very strange when you think about it. And so um, this, there's one review, and I love the description of Tallulah. It says, Jean Marie and Malcolm are plummeted into the magic underground world of flamboyant, red-haired, cigarette-puffing Tallulah. Tallulah sets them a series of tasks, righting wrongs on earth, including expo exposing a phony faith healer by exposing him in one of the book's funniest scenes and making them invisible in order to perform these tasks. So the tasks lead in fine fairy, fel fairy tale, excuse me, fashion to the one big task and then to the reward. In this case, realizing their talents and finding the courage to let them emerge. So again, you've got kind of the same elements, right? You've got two children 
again, not brother and sister this time, but they're two, you know, they're two lonely children in the book and they come together because they are lonely and they do need friends and then they find each other and then they find the ghost of Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> um, they find Tallulah and she sets them on these tasks and whether these tasks are selfish or not, you know, she's setting them to find her necklace. They actually help the children to discover things about themselves, to uh, cement their friendship, to lead them in ways that will help them to grow as characters, etc. So again, you've got adventure. Again, you've got a little bit of mystery. Again, you've got character development as these story, as these, as their friendship forms, as their relationship grows, and as they learn about themselves, learn about each other, learn about what it means to be in relationship as friends, etc. So again, I loved this book. I would recommend it. The ages are similar to that of uh, the Mixed Up Files. This one's a little bit older. This one says ages 10 through 14 and grade level 5 through 9. So a little bit older than the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. But uh, as you're, you know, so as, you're, as your children grow and mature a little bit, then this one might be next up on their reading list. We do have to take our second break of the podcast, but when we come back, we will be wrapping up this episode on author E.L. Konigsberg. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. We are talking this episode about author E.L. Konigsberg, one of my favorite authors from childhood. And uh, she did die in 2013, so four years ago. But according to her author page, she is the only author to have won the Newberry, Newberry Medal and be runner-up in the same year. In 1968, from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, which was her first novel, won the Newmer Newberry Medal and the Newberry Medal, and then her book, Jennifer Hecate Macbeth, William McKinley and Me, Elizabeth, was named Newberry Honor Book. Almost 30 years later, she won the Newberry Medal once again for The View from Saturday. She has also written and illustrated three picture books, Samuel Todd's Book of Great Colors, Samuel Todd's Book of Great Inventions, and Amy Elizabeth Explores Bloomingdale's. In 2000, she wrote Silent to the Bone, which was named a New York Times Notable Book and an ALA Best Book for Young Adults, among many other honors. After completing her degree at Carnegie Mellon University, Ms. Konigutsberg did graduate work in organic chemistry at the University of Pittsburgh. For several years, she taught science at a private girls' school. When a third of her three children started kindergarten, she began to write. So she was a chemist. She went to school, you know, she, she was in STEM. She was in something that not a lot of women are in, but she, then she also wrote. So she was both a scientist and someone who was creative, which I think influences her book in, her books in a lot of ways. So today I have talked about from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, along with the book Up from Jericho Tell, which might not be everyone's first choice when they think about E.L. Konigsberg. Uh, I did also love Jennifer Hecate, Macbeth, William McKinley, and me, Elizabeth. And that is again, the runner up that she won the two or she won the award and was runner up for the award. And uh, there's another book that she wrote that I read as a child, A Proud Taste for Scar 
Scarlet and Minerva, Minerva. I'm not sure how you pronounce that word. I remember reading that one as a kid. And this one also has some historical elements to it because it's about Eleanor of Aquitaine. <laughs> Eleanor of Aquitaine has been waiting in heaven for a long time to be reuni reunited with her second husband, Henry II of England. Finally, the day has come when Henry will be judged for admission. And while Eleanor waits, three ple people close to her during various times of her life join her, helping to distract her and providing a rich portrait of remarkable women of a remarkable woman in history. So if you are a family or if you have children who are interested in history, who like stories of kings and queens and those sorts of things, which I did as a child, I was fascinated by, you know, kings and queens and royalty. I loved historical fiction. I may again have been a very strange child. I don't know because all I have is you know, my own childhood <laughs> to think about. I loved books like that. And so A Proud Taste for Scarlet and Miniver is this book, and that has some historical fiction aspects to it. But again, you got a little bit of that mm, paranormal, supernatural kind of stuff because it is, of course, as Eleanor of Aquitaine is in heaven waiting for her husband to join her. And so you get to learn a little bit about her life and some history and those sorts of things. And then the book that I mentioned a minute ago, Jennifer Hecate, Macbeth, William McKinley and me, Elizabeth, it's a very long title and it's a mouthful, but here is the description of that one. Elizabeth is an only child, new in town and the shortest kid in her class. So you're recognizing some themes here, right? Uh, children who go on adventures, children who maybe don't fit in, children who feel out of place in their lives, in their peer groups, in society, whatever. So she is, Elizabeth is an only child, new in town and the shortest kid in her class. She's also pretty lonely until she meets Jennifer. Jennifer is, well, different. She's read Macbeth. She never wears jeans or shorts. She never says please or thank you. And she says she is a witch. It's not always easy being friends with a witch, but it's never boring. At first, an, appearance, an apprentice and then a journeyman witch, Elizabeth learns to eat raw eggs and how to cast small spells. And she and Jennifer collaborate on cooking up an ointment that will enable them to fly. That's when a marvelous toad, Hilary Ezra, enters their lives. And that's when trouble starts to brew. I cannot re recommend this author enough because of, just as I've said, I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again <laughs> this episode, but it's stories about finding friendship. She writes stories about finding yourself, about figuring out where you fit in this world, even if you are a little bit different, about finding friends who appreciate you for you, about finding people in your lives who, even if you are a little bit different from the rest of the world, you can find those people who love and support you and go on adventures with you. And even, you know, there's always a little bit of a quirky twist in these books, whether it's living in a museum after you've run away, whether it's being sent on quests by a dead actress from the 20s, whether it is, you know, a, a, a girl who says she's a witch, but who's read Macbeth. You know, there are all of these wonderful things in these books. I cannot recommend E.L. Konigsberg to you enough. If you read them as an adult, I love them. I do. Read them to your children. Let your children read them. Go on these adventures with the children that are written about by E.L. Konigsberg, and hopefully you will love them as much as I do. So I want to thank you for joining me this week for my discussion, uh, kind of my love letter <laughs> to E.L. Konigsberg. I, I do. I love her. I will continue reading her. I will continue telling other people about her. But thank you so much for joining me, me this week as I discuss the books, of, some of the books of e. L. author E.L. Konigsberg. I hope you will join me next week because I'm very excited. I have another author, author interview set up. And this one is with uh, author Curtis C. Chen. He has written a book called Waypoint Kangaroo that came out last year. And he has another book coming out in a couple of weeks called Kangaroo 2. T-O-O. -O. It's the second book in this series about kangaroo. They are science fiction. They are set in space. They are set in the future and they are 
wonderful books. So I hope you'll join me when I chat with author Curtis C. Chen next week. In the meantime, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download them on SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, etc. Any of the apps that you use for any mobile devices, you can download our podcast for those. You can follow us on social media. Please hit me up on social media. I know I say this every week, but I would love to hear from you. We can be found on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, all of those lovely places that you may go visit with you know, your own social media accounts. So please come find me, please interact with me, leave your comments, etc. As I said, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope that you go out and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.